First Suburi Can from Can Kamai Migi Hami This is Show Manucci. First Suburi, Show Manucci is emphasizing stabilizing the hips or to establish the hips. So we want to establish the hips, the solidity between the feet, <clears throat> dropping down to horizontal with an extension, out, coming from your center, out, finishing horizontal. Different from the Kamai, the Kamai goes towards the face, to, to the eyes, but the finishing of the cut finishes horizontal with a good balance in it. So the cut finishes deep, but as you get better at establishing your hips, you come up a little bit and you will see in Saito Sensei being quite upright. But if you look at Saito Sensei's early days, he was very deep. As he established his body, and his center and his hara, he was able to be much more upright and also his knees was not in the best of conditions. So he would come up more upright. So he would be more here, but still being centered and controlled from up here. But if you establish from the beginning a deep base, you get the feeling of being very centered and, and grounded uh, with 50-50 weight transmission between the feet. So you're moving your center core of, of your body uh, back and forth. So you will be using the pulley effect between the legs using the center, the hara, to draw back and forth. So it becomes this feeling. So you can recognize this motion in the rowing exercise of Aikido that Olsen says was giving us in the practice. So the rowing exercise, a two-dimensional back and forth uh, exercises, the leg motion retaining your center point of the body uh, with the low center of gravity, but using the leg balls to move us back and forth. This enables us, uh, instead of stepping where I would be back on my back leg and I would step on the front foot and I will lose my back balance. So, we are going from a stepping, stepping, stepping relationship to pulling, to pulling, to pulling, to pulling, to pulling, to pulling relationship, which then retains your balance within your central uh, body here. As you can see how this relates. We will also see how that move motion uh, the rowing exercise stems from the jaw ski, the jaw thrust, which is based on the spear thrust. This motion between the feet, when you're using uh, the motion as a slinky from hip to hip, from quad to quad. So you have this motion. So you have the rowing, 
exercise of Wilson say that stems from the spear thrust that becomes our jaw ski itch up itch and retaining the balance between 50 50 between the feet the same applies uh, when we do the bokken cut the sword cut the motion between the feet is fundamental in this motion. Looking at the body, we begin to look at the feet. So the feet are in the Wama tradition, uh, the stance is Hammi, which translates as half body. And if I use the line, the front foot is completely straight on the line towards the opponent. And the back foot is 45 degrees on the same line which then qualifies and the dictates that when we stand this in the relaxed position our hip will be angled in say 45 degrees so you will have 45 degrees angle uh, in your hips and while the hips are 45 degrees we, we still have some 10 degrees rotation uh, ability to rotate our upper body without affecting the hips. So, so even though our center line is facing this way, we have the ability to rotate without changing the position of the hip. So now we are uh, we'll be able to stand with the Ken Kamai straight forward. Our upper body is not twisting but moving as one piece out from the pelvic floor. So we'll be able to turn and, uh, and turn our hara, our center, towards our opponent. Uh, that without having to turn our or twist our hips like this. The hips are fixed uh, on the hummy stance, but the rotational from up here turns into kamai. So that's the basic kamai. So 45 degrees in the hips and, and rotating that body towards your, towards your opponent and facing that way. Now ankles has to be relaxed. So you have a, a soft foot on the ground. So your soles are flattening out uh, on, on the ground. Uh, the, the input is under the ball of the foot so when you are moving the pressure point comes under the ball of the foot and uh, you could have a slightly grippy feel but that's just a natural uh, point of uh, contact with the ground of your feet and that would represent our hand cocu because feet uh, soles and palms connect up as knees and elbows connect up, as shoulders and hip connects up. <clears throat> then we're gonna uh, we're not gonna squat. So in this posi position, don't do this. Uh, so the back foot is quite important. Don't let the back foot open up. So you're opening your hip and don't sit like this is way wrong. Yeah, this is not what we do. So this is what I call frog style. Bring the back foot up, settle the hips, don't squat in your knees, come up, but come down in the hip crease, in the hip core. This becomes very important. So you come down here and you come down in the hip crease and you settle, settle in here, balance. And then you have the motion between the feet here. As you come up to your hara, when we lift and when we raise and cut the sword, the hara has a great importance, but that means you have to be able to develop a hara, which, uh, which I'm just learning about. So there are many, many more people, much more developed uh, how to use the hara properly. But as if I understand correctly, you want to have this rotating back and rotating forward. 
just as we would do as we would do the rowing exercises we have the power of roll uh, uh, rolling back rolling forward rolling back rolling forward so we have this slinky effect uh, between the feet so you have this and this and this so that would be replicated in our cup it's just that when we lift the sword we want to have the the almost like pulling coming down on the back as as a weight lifting it up in the front so you have a <coughs> rotation in the back and when we come down we have the same thing coming down this way so we have this dual opposing forces coming up coming down coming up coming down coming up coming down so you're lifting it you're raising the sword from the center not from the shoulders but from <coughs> from down here still having this even if the foot draws back you still have that quality draws back resettle draws back resettle draws back resettles draws back resettles draws back resettles coming in this position you want to connect the body vertically from top to toe and horizontally from fingertip to fingertip so when you bring your hands together you're not losing the Aiki cross that you bring together in the sword kamai and then you extend your ki and stretch from your center and you pull from all the way out to the tip and extend it beyond the tip <coughs> so when you have a connected body and you're going to use the elasticity that you gain from a full connected body you're going to use the elasticity as part of the the cut so when you draw up you're going to have this extension of the elastic body in the front so when you come to the stretching point it's going to have a rebound even though you're not just simply relying on rebound but you're moving the thing sort back but you come here and you're going to have a rebound effect establishing the connected body means that we can establish from the ground up and we also recognize that the movement between the feet is that we never overstretch onto the front foot we never overstretch back to the back foot so we never give 100% on the front foot we never give 100% on the back foot and as we are moving from extreme to extreme we always going to have once we come to the back part we always going to have immediately a pull forward and then once we reach the forward part there's always going to be a pull coming back so if you would then rest this movement it would find its own place back into the middle so you have that calibration where we would end up with 50 50 weight uh, balance between the feet as we were always told in Iwama that we want to have 50 50 between the feet <clears throat> and that only start making sense to me once i start learning about uh, the connected body uh, from dan harden because then we are able to use the elastic uh, quality of the fascia of the connected body uh, to pull instead of stepping every time we stepped i was always unbalancing myself as i walk from one foot to the other but the moment we are start using this other method of movement my balance re uh, was retained and there was never any excess force bringing me out of balance when i would do any cuts because this motion was contained within the body so there was no excess momentum carrying me off balance this was extraordinary 
So one measure that most of you probably know uh, to know is that your knee never should pass over the point of the toes. So if you're passing over here, you have excess strain on the knee. So, <coughs> so that's a good measure that if you move forward here, that should stay within there because then you're able to sustain the force down into the ground. Uh, what you want in addition to this is to have an invisible line, as it were, from the, from the upper leg into the ground in front of you. So you actually have a, a division here of establishing ground contact. So you're, bow, you're bowing the leg with an invisible line touching the ground here. Same thing with the, same thing with the back leg here. So you have almost like double reference points coming into the ground, bowing, bowing the legs in and, and coming into your hip crease, very important. <coughs> so this would spread your, foot, spread your feet onto the ground as well. But you're using this invisible lines in addition to your, your physical leg coming down. <coughs> that establishes your center and the center is not fixed so you have this ability to move it in in relationship to your uh, legs moving here and then as you gather your uh, your connected body around your cent center part of the body your hara which is not only the front but in the back and when you move, you have a rotational aspect coming this way. And when you cut, it's a rotational aspect forward. So you have this motion that starts looking like this internal eight as you move back and forth. When you have this expression and you connect out, you connect out, you still connect up, you come up. Here, hands are behind the bokken, elbows are brought in, just as we would do with shominuchi. We do not flare the elbows, we keep the elbows low, weighted down, support the sword with the hands, don't flare here. When we do solo exercises, once you come up here, you can open your right hand, let the sword glide in your hand so you're allowed to drop it straight onto your spine. Then when you initiate the cut, you pull it back into grip and you cut into horizontal. You're coming up, opening the right hand, allow it to fold all the way back to the back, regain the grip and strike. This is a solo exercise of the first Suburi, the Shomenuchi exercise. Now, this is the full range and you have your balance here. You're not leaning over. Coming up, you're striking. And if you let go your weapon, you will find yourself balanced 50-50 between the feet. Now, when you do part in practice, you don't have time to drop the sword all the way back. Uh, so every time you do part in practices, the, the, the cut will happen much shorter because of the speed aspect. So if it be much shorter, you come here. But originally, train with full range. And that is the same essence as when we do anything, we practice big and then we go faster, we make it more smaller. So any motion can be done large and then we make it faster and smaller and more comprised when we become more, uh, uh, if, for example, when we go faster with partner practices. Uh, so it's not two different styles, it's just 
one big style and one comprised style that that should easily easily be explained together there. details looking at the grip of the hand make sure that the bottom hand the little finger is simply just on the edge so dropping over so when you grab it the butt the hilt of your sword comes in your hand that will help for example when you do ski you have support of your palm of the sword so do not gri grip like this so you leave an end out there that's going to hurt your wrist when you hold it like this if you hold it right on the end with a little finger dropping over your wrist going to be uh, smooth and nice and clear there then where do you place your front hand imagine putting four fingers roll them out and that's where you want your grip so then you have a good grip between your hands the hand is gripping from above from above and this is the same grip as a yon kyo yon kyo grip here yon kyo here using the little finger uh, ring finger and long finger uh, and, and, and here so the least strength in the index finger and the long finger like this now don't let your fingers lay uh, pointed out against the weapon close the fingers around don't practice with open hands holding it with your thumb and forefinger you're not going to have any chance to hold on to the sword if someone hits it so always have your hands fully enclosed around the sword that doesn't mean you should grip it uh, super hard but if you have your hand open you will not have time to close the hand if the sword is being hit but if your hand is closed you 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 have no problem of tightening the hand when you have to whether it cut or whether receiving but it's a soft grip but it's a closed grip yeah once again there <laughs> Now, I very much suffer from holding too far out. I'm exaggerating. If you do a cut like that with a sword, your tendency is to roll your shoulder forward and tilt your body. So you want to bring your hand back so you're able to keep this. Now, <coughs> the showman cut is completely straight down the middle. Straight down the middle is the showman cut. This is different from a yokomen cut that curves in to the side. It curves into the side of the head or to the arteries next to your throat. They are slightly different. They are dealt with later, but we are only dealing with the shomen cut for now. And uh, uh, the, the critique that the Hanmi uh, may get from various sword schools is explained in the Wama tradition is that when we start doing hapogiri, when we start turning and like that, uh, the explanation was that we can do the turns 180 uh, from ham from right hummy to left hummy uh, quite easily. So that's where our hummy stems from. <coughs> So coming back to Ken Kamai in Migi Hami with a connected body uh, vertically of course is the most essential than horizontally this is horizontally this is horizontally and equally so we have an equal understanding of our back as we have in the front so we are not front uh, <coughs> uneven. We want to have this understanding of our back. Uh, and that comes very much into place when we do the cut. We want to have the feeling of raising the sword from this hara centered rotation. And when we cut the sword, we don't cut from the shoulders. We don't cut from the upper body, but we just, we just rotate that. We let it fall down. And as we cut, we are driving 
It's been driving, <coughs> been driven by underneath. So the hill comes down and the tip drives in. So don't run it with the top over. Drive it with a hilt into tip. So as you cut, you cut hilt to tip. Now, sometimes it's demonstrated as one, two. But that is just to show the different, uh, uh, to show uh, the, the two points. So we have the hilt and we have the tip. And to, to emphasize both of them, we sometimes show hilt to tip. But in fact, it's one thing. It's a rolling cut that emphasizes the hilt into tip. So at any point of the cut, that is the effect. It's the hilt that drives into the tip. And that goes on throughout the whole cut. The hilt is moving and the tip is moving in. The hilt is moving and the tip is moving in. So that means uh, uh, the sword cut or a bucking cut is not the blunt. It's not the blunt strike. It's not bashing anything. It's coming in hilt. And then with a, with a sword, that would, with a blade, it would cut the skin, for example. With a, with a bokken, uh, obviously the wood, the blunt object, will not be able to cut the skin. But what it does with, with coming in with the hilt into tip is that it displaces uh, the object. So when the sword comes in, when the bokken comes in, with the sword comes in and cut arteries. The bokken comes in and displaces uh, uh, the opponent. <coughs> of course, a sword with a sharp blade can cut anything quite easily because they simply because the blade is <coughs> heavy and sharp. A bokken, of course, bluntly can hurt anyone simply by crashing into you. So it's bashing into you, it will hurt. But the whole point with the IK cut is that you're using, <coughs> and this is when the metaphor of yin and yang comes into place, and they're working together in the rotational <coughs> circular manner. <coughs> and move, <coughs> and sorry, excuse me, and moving in a trajectory forward. So when it hits the target, is already uh, it has a trajectory forward which which uh, then comes in with a hilt and drives over into the tip with a blade it would cut with a blunt weapon it would displace it would create an effect now we must understand this uh, properly because we do the same cut uh, when we use the jo. Uh so from suburi, so the uh, six suburi, shomen uchikomi with the jo, we have the same grip as we do with the bokken. We have the same hummy. So remember, this this uh, ken kamai is different from the ski kamai, and of course the default ski kamai is on the left side, simply to uh, balance it off to the Ken Kamai on the right. But obviously you can have a Ski Kamai uh, from this position as well. Now, that when we bring it in the Ski Kamai, our Kamai changes because we have the Jo on our side. When we have a Ken Kamai, Ken means sword. So we have a sword stance. The sword or the Jo is from uh, held in front. Now, when we do six suburi, which is shomen uchikomi, it's exactly the same strike we do with the sword. We have the same motion here. It's the same motion going on. It might be a little bit, uh, uh, in the beginning, it might be more difficult to accommodate because it's a much taller weapon and it might be more difficult to control the end of it. But nevertheless, once you get the hang of it, it's the same cut as with the sword. Coming up, coming down, drawing up, cutting down. Same sword, same sword cut uh, in the showman version. 
and of course it's the same version in the Jokomen. We are using it as a uh, as a cutting weapon. Uh, so that is just good to keep in mind when we change between the weapons. <clears throat> so looking at uh, at the cup, at the showman cup, uh, then as we lift, don't lift it in, extend up so you have this feeling, just as we would raise the showman cup, using the wrist, the elbows and shoulders. Now it's important not to raise the shoulders, don't lift it with the shoulders. The shoulders should simply rotate around. So these exercises of simply using the, the <coughs> rotation, rotational cuff up here is to not to lift the shoulder up, but simply have it rotating around. So it becomes effortless, very fluid, very quick motion. So beware of any tension in the shoulders when you cut. So, and that's why there's no power in the arm, it's just gently. But no power in the arm doesn't mean it's completely loose and you have no connection. You still need the connection through your whole body, pulling from the center up to your feet, up to your finger, up to your, out through your back into the tip of your back. So this is something that has to be in place. Your joints are open and soft, but you're connected through the body in your cut. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so let's come back to the cut. As it carves through the air, uh, we are carving through the air and we are cutting what comes in front of us. At any given point on this trajectory, if we meet the target, it's gonna have the hilt to tip effect of displacing or cutting, if we use a blade uh, effect. It's not simply at the target point. It will have the carving effect through the air at, and at anything that meets it along the way, will be uh, disposed of in, in like manner as it cuts through. Uh, so it's very precise in this sense. Careful of aligning the body. Don't distort it. Don't pull the neck back, separating the sword from the neck. The head usually sits. <coughs> the, depending on how deep you go with the cut, because you can see like uh, young days of Saito Sensei is a really wide stance. But, and that is really to work on, on the uh, low center of gravity of coming down. And as you establish, as you stabilize your hip, you're able to come in, bring your feet in together and yet retain a low center of gravity. Uh, <coughs> now, <coughs> yes, so what I was going to say about that is that uh, usually the neck will keep the line of the spine. The line of the spine usually follows the angle of the back leg. So as I come up closer and closer, my spine becomes here. But as I come forward, I'm here. This doesn't mean I'm leaning over. This is just completely 50-50 between the feet. <clears throat> so the body can be angled without leaning over. That would be leaning over, losing uh, your balance that would not be leaning over. So that would, you would see the difference from right tummy to left tummy. 
strong supported back leg give in the front of course when we do these stances these kamais <coughs> back leg is never 100 percent stretched it also always have a give but it never squats so make a difference never fully extended never squatting but you want to find that point where you they come into your hip and you have spring uh, you have a spring in your step as it were but you should also consider when we do the showman cut that when we lift the sword up when we lift the arms up and lift anything up we need to have a balance weight that comes down so there's a slight feeling of dropping as you raise something. So when we raise the sword, we don't want to have a lifting feeling with the body. And when we cut, we don't want to have a dropping feeling cut because that would lend our motion to undulate <coughs> in a not a balanced way. So when we lift the sword, we also have a dropping of the hara down. So as we draw back, we also have a feeling of dropping in and as we cut the sword we have a slight meeting coming up to meet the sword so it's you're drawing apart and you're drawing together so you have a feeling of <coughs> drawing apart and drawing together 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 <coughs> so so there's a slight undulation of opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. <coughs> this will come back in every motions that we do in Aikido so, uh, and ha ha how we start moving. So we want to move from a, a body that is simply bobbing up and down to a, a motion where people say they hardly they hardly move they they have a streamlined movement but what, what you don't see necessarily is that within the body there's a separating and coming back together and it's a dynamic separation that goes like an elastic band separating and drawing back together <clears throat> in the sense that when you have an elastic band uh, once you take out the slack in it it still has a give of of come and go, come and go, and it's still very elastic. You have taken the slack out, and then you have a, the play of the elasticity within the range of the rubber band, and so does our body. So, in order to feel it, draw here and come back up. And one thing also to mention, cut with a big expansive feeling. Don't cut with a closure. Don't close and co contract when you cut. Don't contract. And that goes throughout all Aikido technique that you, when you cut, you open. And that will come into play when you begin to practice Kiai. So when you open up, yay! your ki wants to be <coughs> expressed out. You don't want to have a ooh, ooh, when you cramp and you contract. So an open body, opening body is uh, what we want to have the feeling of. In the Kamai, we want to have an openness, open the chest, open the body, yet connect vertically, horizontally, open. Come in, drop into your center, have an undulation feeling of sinking in as you raise, coming back up, meeting, coming back up, meeting, come back up, meeting. Hey, 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 hey.
There are different kinds of Kiai that many people, different, different teachers practice different ways. <coughs> but fundamentally, with the Kiai, it's not a contraction, but it's an outlet. Then you can concentrate it, or you can have it big and, uh, big and wide, or you can concentrate it just as you can <coughs> have a big motion, which you draw close, into, into make it more effective and speedy without contraction, but you make it smoother, clearer, and sharper, and faster. <coughs>